Hey out there survivors, how you all doing? Welcome back for another Outlaw Sessions episode. It's been a while, but we're back with another Outlaw. We have uh, the man himself. The man, you know, they say the one thing that keeps uh, anything running, like an army or, or anything like that, is their stomach. And we have the man who keeps the Outlaws fed and happy and watered. That's right. And that is right. We have Jim Santangeli. I hope I did not butcher your name. No, it's it's pretty good. You did good. <laughs> yeah. I like to uh, good is fine as long as it's like, oh my god, you've you've dishonored my entire family legacy. <laughs> say it again. Just say it again. Say it one more time. Jim Santangeli. Oh yeah, that's all right. I think most people <laughs> they hit the G harder than the T, right? Oh, okay. So it's Santangeli, but people like to hit the Santangeli. Ah, uh, I get you. Yeah, cool. That's that's. Yeah. I'm okay with that. That's that's. I I didn't I didn't disrespect your entire family line. That oh my much. god, I can't tell you how many people have said my name in the most bizarre ways. You know, and I get it. It's long. It's long. So I think it <laughs> scares you when you weren't expecting it. Like yeah. a lot of teachers, the first day of class, the teacher would look at the page and go like, like they'd freeze, and you knew it was your name. <laughs> you know, when there was a pause, you're like, that's me. What are they gonna do? And they said like, send the gelly. You know, they would. Some would just butcher it. it, but Santangeli, I'm good. If you go, if someone hits Santangeli on the first one, it's like it's impressive. Yeah, this guy, you know? <laughs> just confetti cannons go off that you didn't know were there. Right. I didn't, wow. I don't, I didn't plan it. I just wherever I'm going, it just shoots I, balloons and confetti out of the sky. And they get a check <laughs> for fifty thousand dollars, Patty. I, I love hearing. You were so close. You're so close. <laughs> next time, then, next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just gotta, have to. I gotta tell the people carrying the check. To, to be like, <laughs> just go didn't back. Do it. You didn't do it, guys. Go They're home. behind that door. They're behind that door. They're ready to come out. That they're so pissed. <laughs> they haven't done it years. Next, the next pandemic, interviewer. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Next podcast, maybe. <laughs> um, it's funny because <laughs> hearing you say that. Um, Hearing you say about like the teachers looking at the paper and like not and knowing that it was your name, I, I can't, uh, I can't, I definitely can't specifically relate personally because it's like, Patty Murphy. Yeah. Are you, is this a joke? Like, yeah. Is this, if you screw that one up, then <laughs> yeah, you might want to leave that class. <laughs> yeah. Especially in this me. country. Like, um, yeah. but like, yeah, I've often said that like my parents just like, they didn't actually name me. They just ticked the box, you know, it's like default like Irish right, name. The, yeah, the default name, <laughs> right, yeah. There In Ireland, go. they just go like, do you want to name it or do you want us to just sort of give it? <laughs> yeah, exactly. If you the do it. Of, they go like, Patty Murphy is fine, yeah. <laughs> if you do it in the UK, it's just John Smith. It's the same thing. John Smith. I will segue our name conversation uh, back to Red Dead with this nugget. Uh, <clears throat> so I worked on Red Dead for six years. Yeah, wow. Five, six years. I feel like as I get older, that number is going to get bigger. Keep getting bigger. Like 10 yeah, years exactly. from now, I'm going to be like, I worked on that show for 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> but I didn't know. I knew my name was Pearson. Yeah. But I didn't know he had a, he never had a first name. No one ever told oh, really? me his first name. Then it was like, as when the game came out, and people were playing it. Oh, God, I'm, not, I'm trying to think when. I think it's when. I, uh, I'll admit I never played the game. Yeah, yeah, of course. I watched my friend play the game, and it's beautiful and it's epic. And yeah, I, but it's I like a movie. It. I'm I'm just bad at it, controller. I'm, I'm not good with controllers. Yeah. So it's more frustrated than anything else to like move around. So I just don't play video games very much. Um, it's my thumbs. But we can. And, we live um, in an age where you can just watch somebody, and that's awesome. I actually like that a lot. Yeah. I'm not on Twitch, but I remember watching like YouTube videos of people playing. Like there was one that stood out to me. It was because I played this game on Nintendo called uh, Castlevania. Oh yeah. So it's just yeah, it's just like sort of what like a left to right kind of video game, and um, this guy recorded himself playing Castlevania on one life. Oh, He's like, I'm gonna whoa. beat the whole game on one life, and I was like, Oh, I'm so into it. Yeah. And I saw, le I saw levels of the game that I never saw. Yeah, because I never were uh, the thumbs couldn't get that far. <laughs> uh, but then, it, you know, but people started posting videos of Red Dead, <clears throat> and I think it's when I don't want to spoil anything for people who are playing, but I'll just say at some point, Pearson has a general store. Oh yeah, and I believe the sign says 
Simon Pearson. And I was like, my name was Simon? That's crazy. You know, there's actually like kids shows that he was like, well, I know my name is Simon. Do you remember that? Yeah. Well, that was like for me, but the opposite. But I didn't know my, my name was Simon. And also one of the characters in Castlevania, there you go, was Simon Belmont. He was That was one oh, of the really? vampire hunters. They didn't even know there was people with names. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I, I I never knew Pearson's uh, first name. I remember asking because there was a producer on the on the video game at at Rockstar. Yeah. Her name was Pearson. Her last name was Pearson. So I like felt a camaraderie to her, and I'd be like, "Is this named after you?" And you know, she's like, "No, of course not." But, <laughs> or at least I think it wasn't. But you know, I, you know, uh, I never knew the first name of, of Pearson. That's that that's interesting. That gets that that covers actually some of the stuff that I was going to ask. But like. One one of the things that I was <laughs> you were like one of your questions was do you know your characters? <laughs> one of the questions is uh, what is Pearson's first name? <laughs> uh, like one thing, but it, what I kind of was getting at with it though is that there was a question I had about like I know from talking to like a bunch of your your colleagues on this that like you didn't always get all the info up front. Sure. It was kind of drip fed tea, but like I was curious. Like, did you learn much about like Pearson's background? As you, you know. Like the fact that he was ex, you know, Navy and, you know. Yeah. I mean, obviously playing the character of Pearson, you're not going to get a lot of yeah. information because I'm not in a lot of the um, missions. Yeah. You know? Like I'm not whole, I don't, I don't have a gun. Yeah. I'm a gunless character. I have a, I have a, a um, like a mat, what do you call that? A, uh, whatever. I have a butcher's knife. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or whatever that big. Or a meat is. tenderizer of some description. <laughs> a cleaver, a meat cleaver. Yeah, there we go. Right. So I'm not, I would, I wish they wrote one mission where I could walk around with the meat cleaver. Just hacking stuff. And up. hack somebody up. Just have like a cooler moment that all the other cool guys got to have. <laughs> and instead of me and my apron. But, you know, uh, so I'm not going on missions. Therefore, I'm not learning that much about the mm. tale of, uh, you know, of those characters. Um, it's been a while. I forget their name. So, so yeah, Marston is the guy we follow originally in the other game. Yeah, and then and then uh, why am I forgetting his name? What's his name? Arthur 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 Mor- Arthur, Arthur Morgan. Morgan. Right, <laughs> Mr. Morgan. I there we go. That. There we go. <laughs> Mr. Morgan. Mr. Morgan. We're hungry, Mr. Morgan. Yeah, we need more food, Mr. Morgan. It was basically like Mr. Morgan. We need. Yeah. But anyways, um, so no, I was privy to some back story of Pearson because I think the director was great and wanted me to was that Rob use it to was that Rod Rod yeah Rod, Rod sorry yes. Rod was the best everyone I miss uh, Rod everyone Rod was, says he was incredible do you remind me of a little Ricky Gervais <laughs> oh, he, he was so like sarcastic and stuff and <laughs> I would always come in with my lines ready and I would like I would be I would think I would be uh, energetic and ready to act, but he would just be like, forgive me for my accent. He'd be like, oh my God, Tim, <laughs> did you come? Are you ready? Wake up. <laughs> He'd be like, wake up, Jim, wake <laughs> up. You know, and I'd be like, I am. I thought I was. I, I didn't realize I had to be so much bigger because shooting a video game, what I realized was you have to be like much bigger with your yeah voice and your clarity and your movements because these people are playing a video game they don't want subtlety <laughs> talking like this you know and i was like geez i guess i'm not big enough so i would have to and i've never i'm a kind of actor who no one says like be bigger <laughs> be yeah. louder be more broad but i was like getting those notes but i loved him because he would always tease me about it but he would get it out of me and it was nothing more rewarding than rod saying we got it. Yeah. <laughs> you Great know, take. Be like, All right, take it, you know? And what's so cool about the shooting that is because you're shooting it in a facility with basically, I don't know how many cameras are around you. Yeah. Just every sea angle. of cameras. If you get one take, you get every take. Yeah. It's not like a movie where you have to turn the camera around and get the other side of the conversation. You get it once you got it all. Uh, so I found that interesting. So when Rod would say we had it, it felt good. Uh, but yeah, Rod told me that like, um, Pearson was, you know, an ex Navy guy. And um, although there was a moment during those years when the question of maybe he's lying was mm. posed to me. Okay. It was like maybe Pearson wasn't in the Navy and just 
you know, lied about it to either become part of the gang or yeah. to have some credibility. But he's like a blowhard who has no Navy experience and therefore has like zero like machismo. Whereas at least, but then it just turned out that like um, they didn't, you know, it wasn't going to, they, they weren't going to do that. It was just, he was part of the Navy. And, you know, you learn a lot from getting the monologues. To, oh, yeah. You know, but so that's you the thing. That, you know, the camp scenes in this game, like to go back to it, right? Like the, in in most video games, traditionally, you only learn stuff on missions. You know what I mean? You only learn stuff on missions. What was really revolutionary about this was that, like, you were able to. Like, I often found times where I was just hanging around camp, and it was like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be doing stuff in this game, but I'm actually just happy to like sit down and chat to like whoever's sitting around the campfire about whatever. Um, and so. The car what what is what's amazing is almost more than any other game, this game kind of built this massive um the fan base could cling to almost every member of the gang because there was enough you could learn enough about every character, unlike we'd say even GTA, which I love, you're only ever gonna learn a certain amount about any of the supporting characters. Whereas in this, you could at least get a good idea of Pearson, of Miss Grimshaw, of uh, you know, all these, you know, Sam Strelitz's character, Mary Beth, you know. Um, but one of the things that stands out to me about Pearson, the reason that, like, I found him an interesting character, obviously, as I say, one thing is army marches on its stomach. You need the guy who's like, hi, I'm just feeding everyone. Sure. It right. doesn't sound like a lot, but if I'm not here doing this, you'll all fucking kill each other. <laughs> Basically. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. But, like, the thing is, what's interesting is Pearson... Somebody pointed out to me that Pearson doesn't seem to doesn't seem to actually engage in any of the criminal activities of the gang necessarily. Like Pearson seems to be one of the lesser like he's not uh he doesn't seem to have as much blood on his hands. Well, animal blood, I guess, but like not as much human blood on his hands as the rest of the gang. Oh, if any. I yeah. mean, I think um I think if we were to go with the lie angle let's say uh which we didn't but if we were to do that it would be even more clear that i think the pearson character is the epitome of survival yeah i mean i think he's just a survivor and i think you know he got out of the gang when he knew it was like a no pun intended a sinking ship yeah and he decided to go open up like a general store so obviously yeah, I mean, this guy hedges his bets and he, you know, he gets out when he thinks uh, he could be killed. You know, there's no there's no real hero in him, which is kind of great. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like, you know? uh, I mean, that's humanity. Like, I think there are so many people in this. Yes. OK, we want to watch or, or play a game or watch a movie where the lead is as cool and tough and brave as you could yeah. ever be. And we want to live that fantasy and we want to imagine ourselves being capable of that. And some of us are, <clears throat> but I think most of us are Pearson. Yeah. Most of us are trying to eat and drink and forgive me, fuck. And, <laughs> and, and live, yeah. and live, live as long as we possibly can. Get from and point A think, to point Z. Like. <laughs> yeah. Right. And if it meant going from Blackwater to, uh, you know, Dutch's gang and feeling kind of safe among all these guys and gals. And then uh, when that goes to shit, and I believe he was sort of, I do believe he was part of that, right? Didn't he? He made some bad deal with like the Pinkertons or something. Again, yeah, yeah. He, I, I, from what I remember, yeah, he. Again, it's a survivalist instinct. It's a uh, sure. I, I will do what I need to here to get out of this situation. Right. Exactly. So then, um, you know, the gang starts falling apart, and he leaves. Mm. And I think that's that's yeah. He has almost zero blood on his hands. In fact, his family were all whalers. Yeah, they were all like whale. You know, uh, and then the whale business went kaput or whatever, and, and Pearson wasn't able to whale anymore, <laughs> or he never really got a chance. You know, he's like, damn, so they I took it away from the me. Navy, and he was probably just a cook uh, for the Navy. He was a food guy. You know, it's not, I'm not saying it's not you, you're brave to go whaling, but ultimately, he's just a businessman or a cook or a, you know a survivor. He's just a survivor, and that's why no one is going to really um uh 
um, what's it called? No one's going to like dress up as Pearson for Halloween or for, you know, these, uh, you would, uh, these conferences, you know, I, what is that called? when you dress up? Like uh, something? cosplay. It's weird. Though. Cosplay. No one's going to cosplay as Pearson. Cause they go like, who are you? And be like, I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a cook. I, I know how to skin a deer and catch a fish. <laughs> it's like, that's not as exciting as like, I can shoot dead eye with two guns and, you know <laughs> it's weird though because like one thing i've noticed with this game is that people latch to certain characters like there, there are so many people out there that despise uh leopold strauss who i believe it's it's howard panasic's character like mm-hmm. if i'm not mistaken right. like but then you talk to some people and they're like oh strauss is my favorite character and i'm like what really why like <clears throat> explain yourself and uh okay it's, well, it's a, if somebody if Pearson's somebody's favorite character out there and you're listening to this, comment find me below. online, yeah, and let me know. I'd love that. I would, I would love to know that. It, uh, I would love to see somebody dressed as Pearson for cosplay because I think I might have seen one. That's but yeah, that's, but that's the thing is this is <laughs> this is the one series where I th- like this game is the one where I could see that potentially happening. Whereas they say if you go to like anything else, like Resident Evil or Grand Theft Auto or something. The supporting characters never get any love, like never, because you don't get any in-depth uh, chance to get to know them. Right. Whereas this came out and literally right off the back of Red Dead 2's release, like there are, you can go off and read like fan theories about like Pearson and Grimshaw and, you know, at uh, Leopold Strauss and the, the amount of speculation that people go into about these characters, I bet... <laughs> I'm not saying this in a, in a derogatory way, but I bet you're like, holy shit, I didn't even think this much about this character. Like, holy hell. Like, these guys, these people are like, they they want to know yeah. everything they possibly can. And well, I will say what blew me away were, were the fans. I mean, yeah. they were so, not only are they so invested in it, but they are genuinely sweet, you know? Mm. Like, I went to a convention and it was surrounded by like, people who yeah who knew the game way better than i did yeah and characters and um and you know you still get like to me that game feels like it came out a while ago and it would die down and i think to a degree i think it has other games came out but you still get some messages you still get followers and it's like it's all red dead related oh yeah it's really it's truly a special group of people and I, they're great and i mean yeah, all the fans are great. it's funny that you say that because like i you know, Red Dead Two did come out in what end of end of twenty eighteen, um, and then like it won Game of the Year award last year on PC again, like two years after its first release, it won another oh, wow. Game of the Year award. Like this is the game that just keeps on going. You know, so people are still playing it. Yeah, like every time it gets a re-release <laughs> or it. I don't know these things. So many people get so invested in the idea that that the people who play these characters are are. Or yourselves, you probably are like, oh man, people would hate the idea that I don't play video games because I'm in one. I think so many people kind of, to my mind, from doing these interviews and chatting to people, kind of like, don't expect you to. You're, you're actors, you know what I mean? We don't, ex- it's not, it doesn't has to have to be synonymous, you know, well, you know, if you act in video games, you have to know every video game and play every video game. And, right. I, I think I'm surprised... I think I say it with a little bit of like, sorry, I don't play it. Yeah. Not because of the fans, but because a lot of the cast are like really into video games. Like when we were making this game, they would talk about all kinds of video games and playing the original. And um, I remember Steven sat me down and made me watch like um, a condensed version of the first game. He was like, have you played the first game? And I was like, no, I didn't play it. Like, <laughs> oh my God, you want to be in this. You have to know the backstory. And he like opened up his computer and he called up some condensed version of the game. And he was like, this was like the best movie of that year that it came out. And I was like, wow, okay, Jesus. You know, like, <laughs> this guy's really into it. I just want to act. I just want to play a character. I didn't know. But like, you know, you get swept up in it. Yeah, of course. Like, and people are really into the game and you get more into it and. I remember we were all there when they released the trailer. They, the day they released the trailer, I was lucky enough to be at the location, and um, they played it on like the huge 
huge like monitor um and it was epic i can only epic. imagine everybody took it so seriously everybody's into video games you know yeah i felt like the only one and i, I know i wasn't but i felt like the only one who wasn't really into video games yeah so i don't know I, you've talked to the cast members how many of them play video games and it's how many of them it feels like a fairly even split ratio is like because I mean, for example, like Mick now, like Mick wouldn't be a big Mick wouldn't be that into to video games either. You know what I mean? But then, sure. like you said, Steve, Steve maybe doesn't have as much time to play video games, but he's still really into trying to keep up with what's going on in the world of video games and stuff. Um, and then you get someone like, you know, like, you know, Kylie, because again, she is doing a podcast about video games. Kylie is quite up to date. But then Mia, for example, is like, well, I used to watch my little cousins play video games. But so it kind of it, it's kind of felt like an even split. Um, and it, the funny thing is, I get it. Man. The reason I get it, right, like Red Dead 2, just to, just to give you some kind of insight here. When I played Red Dead 2, I just shot a movie and I was like, I shot the movie in like the fall. But I was free from, um, I think, like May of 2019 and i was like for like a couple of months and i was like i am just going to play i'm going to turn playing red dead 2 into a professional capacity i'm just going to do nothing but play red dead 2 for like three months solid because i want to just get lost in it you know what i mean yeah and at that like that's that's like 200 hours of that game that i played and like i understand that like to, to most people that's insanity. Like, that's like, you, you're dead. It's not like watching a movie. You know, you watch a movie that's three hours max, generally. Um, it's such a time sink, time commitment. But when you get a game like Red Dead or, you know, there's a handful of other that have kept, others that have come out over the last couple of years that really hit that, like, high bar of, like, cinematic quality of, like, feeling, like, more than the sum of their parts. Um, you don't, for me... Being a person who would play any game, when I get one of those, I don't mind putting 200 hours into it because I'm like, this is like, to forgive the whatever, but it's like, this is like the white whale. Like, this doesn't come along all the time. Gotta you know, capture it yeah. while it's here. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to make a lot of like sea puns. You know, just, we'll just be puns. singing sea shanties by the end of this. <laughs> oh, man, that was my favorite part. My favorite. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of favorite parts, but one of my favorite parts was learning the sea shanties or the yeah they're yeah. all pretty much shanties um they were stressful because a lot of times they would give me like six songs to learn and they'd be like see you tomorrow oh and you'd be wow like, you nuts oh you god know, that's a little dramatic i think they gave me like two three days yeah but it's still a long time to learn these really intricate uh songs that have like words that you don't use yeah you know what i mean and, exactly uh, but a couple of them, like I still know, and like my wife and I will sing them, and we just feel like they're. It's cool to know, like sea shanties. It is very cool. Like again, I noticed that there was a trend around the time that uh, Assassin's Creed Four came out. That that was a pirate. It was all about pirates and stuff. And there was sea shanties in that game too. And I would notice that my friends who were all at the time in their like late twenties, we were working on film sets late into the night out in the woods and stuff. And next thing, oh, there would be lads just walking through uh, in the middle of the night out in the woods just singing sea shanties. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah. Have we gone back in time? Did we go through some black hole? Yeah. And like, and I, yeah, I think the whole, like that, I, I, that's one of my favorite things about Pearson is you'd be wandering around the camp at night or something and he'd just be preparing food or whatever and he'd be singing away to himself. And it, uh, it added to that feeling of the camp being alive. You know what I mean? Yeah, Absolutely. I mean, it really was alive, and I think that that was. I remember learning that I would be playing poker and singing and mm. telling stories and fishing and things that, like, I, I, you know, because I didn't understand how the game was being made while while yeah. it was being made around me. So you think like, oh, this is an important part of the game, I guess, but it's like it is in the respect that it's it's making the world real. Yeah, but it's also like they're just moments. Oh, yeah. You know, they're capturing moments that you can either be a part of or you don't have to be a part of. You can avoid most characters if you're not into them, you know, like you had to yeah. interact with me. I did start picking up on that uh, pretty early. I was like, OK, I've played like Grand Theft Auto. And yeah, I know that Grand Theft Auto always has like a guy that you go to see when you need something. You need to like get 
those whatever those things are that they give value to you know i don't know what it is a grand theft auto but you know you need more of this you need more of yeah. that to win the game and I, I was like oh okay pearson is the guy that um morgan has to go to to get food or to sell like to give food to the camp yeah or different things to the camp and to keep it keep survival up keep your like whatever that thing is called with like you're a good guy i don't know oh your your uh morality like your yeah, yeah more yeah whatever that is yeah. so i was like oh i'm 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 a checkpoint guy you know what i mean and yeah I'm like, that's fun and then you know i had like i did have a mission where i teach morgan how to like catch crawfish and steal yeah. egg from but not everybody and it's interesting because after a while i was like my sister-in-law played the game a lot like religiously she played like three times through i think and She's like, no, I never got to the point where I learned how to catch crawfish. I think she eventually did, but yeah, you're like, oh, you can live in this world. You can play this game a bunch of times, and it could be a different experience every time you play it. And yeah, I mean, these moments are just the world is truly detailed. I think something you said that's so true, though, is it's it's they're 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 little moments, but the thing is, like in reality, all the like reality is made up of loads of little moments it's not just like big key events like because that's again the misconception like it's like in most yeah. games in gta it'll be like big mission to the next big mission to the next big mission whereas in reality it's like big mission gotta take my daughter to recital gotta do yeah. this <laughs> like, yeah, yeah 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 you know we don't wake up every day and like go to the local you know, Delhi and the guy's like, you have to make a phone call. Yeah. Town. And you're like, what? The phone's going to ring. At yeah. And he'll have a drop off location for you. And you're like, oh, shit, there's a helicopter waiting for you. That's not normal life. So you go like walk up next to Pearson fishing, you know, and just kind of like, and he's like, what? And you're like, nothing. <laughs> like, All right. And that's life. You just sort of, yeah. you can either decide to go do something interesting or you can. Just or you never know, he might one time go like, hey, want me to show you how to catch crawfish? Right. Okay, That's cool. what it was, yeah. 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 Like, yeah. I um, think he had to go to him like he's standing on the dock and he's going yeah. like, all of this is like, it's, a, you know, it's a cook's dream. Why don't we go out there? And then you do. Man, when we shot that, that was incredible. Because they built a dock. They oh, built what? a boat. They like built everything um, out That's of amazing. PB, like out of piping. Yeah. It was like, it was like, it was, it's not like Legos. It was more like Lincoln Logs or something like yeah. that. Like, but it was like working with brilliant children who knew how to put together pipes and, and, and things to make it look like something. And the boat was just piping, but we sat in it and you could row. Oh and then there was God. guys pushing it from behind to make it go. Like they made every, it wasn't just like sitting in a chair and yeah. being like, over there are some crawfish. It's like, no, we're going to like take a boat, get out of the boat, go look for the crawfish. Like the, the shooting experience was challenging, but really fun and like nothing I've ever done and may never do again. That that was one of the questions that I generally have asked everyone today is like, you know, you turn up on set for your first day on this thing. What was experience. that like? like being on Mars? It was it was like NASA and Mars all at the same time. It was like it felt scary, like NASA, like you don't want to fuck up. And yeah, you don't take, can't take any photos. You can't like leak anything, and so you're like, oh, I had my phone out, but I swear I got, I'm not doing anything, you know. And you you just feel like I felt on edge that I, the first day. Yeah. Um. You know. Then they put you in this like space suit that is tight as can be, and a helmet on your head and a camera in your face. <laughs> And ballies all over. It's just like, <laughs> it felt so alien. And then you go into the room and it was like, just being stared at by all these people behind their computers in a wide open room. And you have to perform with somebody who's got a light in their face. <laughs> and I can't really touch you. And I can't make noise when you're acting because it's going to leave. It, it was like, I was like, this is impossible. How do people do this? Do, yeah. Um, and then you you pick it up and you start to like, it becomes normal, uh, as normal as can be. Like it became normal for everybody to sit around <laughs> and like wait for their time to act, but you're just sort of sitting around and you're like spandex. Skin suit. suit <laughs> skin suit with balls all over the place <laughs> and just making like conversation, you know. 
Yeah. And it was insane to me, but uh, it was also, it got very normal. And you feel special that you learned another way of- Of acting. Performing. Yeah, like if someone were to say to me, like, do you want to do motion capture? I'd be like, yeah, like I know how to do it. I have the yeah. muscle memory to do that. Whereas I think somebody else will need like a little time to, to not adjust. a long time, but you needed some time to adjust to that. Yeah. Uh, it was very strange. And I think my first day, I'm positive. My first day was the first day for Roger. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn or if this is shit you can't talk about, but I do think there was somebody who was playing Mr. Morgan for a beat. I think I, I think Rob, Ben Davis out. may have made some like said something similar, like nothing nothing more in depth than what you said, but I think he did say yeah. that there was so people attached. Was. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I'm I'm always curious. You probably I don't know. It's, it's probably hard to remember, but like I remember, like I think it was Howard was saying that one of the first things he remembers shooting was the the cabin the, the 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 cabin in the blizzard scene where they come in and they're throwing all the stuff off the desks and getting the body up and yeah like was, was that kind of early on for you as well or no no i i you've been on it for a while longer two, there was two locations we were shooting in some other town and then they moved to a different facility a bigger facility oh yeah um so i don't know i spent maybe two years or more i don't know how many years it's all blurred to me <laughs> yeah 12 uh, we said yeah you said 12 at the start been 12 years the first eight of them <laughs> So, yeah, I was going to the other facility for a while, um, for a while, because I remember, like, I got very used to driving there. And anyways, then we went to a different location. So, yeah, I think it was one of the first things we shot at that new location, because that new location was much bigger, bigger. and you could, like, you could shoot two things at once. Yeah. So, like, they would get two directors. Rod was always the main guy. But they would get another director to like pick up some other stuff while they were they were banging it out, you know yeah. what I mean? But then Rod would come in and look at it and go like, "I do approve. This is the like take." Or he would be like, "No, I need more of this or that." Yeah. Um, and then the the director would redo it. Uh, anyway, so the place was so much bigger that you could shoot a scene like that. I yeah. Mean, I don't think we could have really done it at the old location. <clears throat> But I remember that vividly because one, it was rare that we were all there. Two, I believe there was even like extras. It was, you know, because usually you go like, "Oh, here's some actors." Uh, you like Jim, go play that other guy. Yeah, exactly. You know, like just yeah, go play somebody standing and like whatever, blown in their hands. And yeah, like, you know. But it was like they, everybody who was in it was there. That final bit was there. There was no, as far as I know, there was no like overlapping and, you know, sort of, you know, the computer magic with that. Yeah, exactly. And I remember when we were done, somebody announced like, this is the biggest scene ever shot um, for a video game. Yeah. Somebody was like, that's the record. Like it's the most motion capture actors ever in one scene for a video game. And everybody like kind of clapped and stuff. <laughs> and it was like a really fun, cool scene. You know that's awesome because yeah I, I do like i think again speaking to ben davis he said that like it was like i think you met you you kind of alluded to this yourself earlier but it was all like it it's got to be gotten a take you know what i mean it's it's not like um movies where it's like well we'll, we're, we'll break it all up and we'll do bits and pieces like ben was like we started here and the take ended here I and mean, it was all one chunk it was like you got to get it beat to beat <laughs> yeah, and that was a lot of Ben. I mean, Ben's obviously yeah. a very talented guy. And he's a real, like, leader, even. He's Dutch, man. Uh, he's just yeah, Dutch. Yeah, he's Dutch on and off, <laughs> yeah. off set. <laughs> but um, anyways, yeah, he uh, he had a lot of lines, I remember, in that. You know, like, I, I just sort of stand there, and then he's just like, Pearson, go do something. I forget what he said. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah, sir. Uh, you don't kill me. <laughs> And that was that was my line. I wish I said that. I know, right? Okay, please just don't kill me. I, I wish I, I said that all the time. Please, Morgan, don't kill me. <laughs> I'm, now, I'm now wishing in my head, I'm like, we could have had such a different Pearson. Like, yeah. <laughs> oh, I do have some regrets about like, because I think Rod was more into <clears throat> like improvising than I, I thought. Because yeah, I didn't want to fuck up. I don't want to yeah. do anything wrong. And you want to get the lines right. But I like making lines a little bit more 
for like comfortable for my mouth. Yeah. So sometimes I like tweak the line a little bit just for me to be able to say it. Yeah. Well, but I come from an improv background and I was like, I really want to just like riff, but improv, you tend to step on each other a bit because yeah. no one knows when your line is over. <laughs> and that's not something you can really do for these motion capture gigs. Yeah. So you learn not to like improvise too much because <laughs> you might step on somebody's line, you know? Uh, but still the idea of like, cause it's funny. Cause for all, um, for everything that you're saying, like Pearson never really, we, we said he is a survivalist. He is somebody that's just trying to get out of this alive. However he needs to, but right. he he doesn't reek of cowardice. Like, it's not like, you know, it's not like every time you see him, you're like, look at this guy. Because, like, he still has this aura of intimidation about him. Like, as in, you know, you come to the camp, he's there with his meat cleaver, just like, Morgan, I need you to get out there and get me six whatever. And you're like, okay, Jesus. Well, like, isn't that, it's sort of like a sad um, um, window into, like, our society as maybe men even where yeah. it's like we have to like not getting killed not going out and looking for a fight could even be considered cowardice yeah like <laughs> of course there's no cowardice in a man who doesn't seek out like yeah de like death and and <laughs> danger you know yeah. like, i don't think that's cowardice i think that's like most people 95 percent of but the I human think race we, we watch movies and we watch tv and you you want to be, you just want to be so brave. And I, and I'm not saying that's not a pressure for women at all, but I think this men are taught or we learn or a condition that there's like, there's a real, like you're a really good man willing to put your life on the line. And that's not, you know, that's fine, but you don't have to and still be a good guy who has bravery yeah. and not a coward and all that. Oh, sorry. But especially in that, like, you know, cowboys and, and stuff like that. Growing up watching westerns with my dad, like, the guy who walks away from a fight or doesn't engage in a fight was always like, you're yellow. yellow. You're, you're yellow, yellow, buddy. Yellow. Yeah, you know, like, and it's right. so true what you say, like, um, but that's, like, I, I loved, one of the things I enjoyed about Pearson is, as I say, he never came across, like, he never came across that the game was trying to make you feel that, like, that quintessential... Oh, he's he's just stay safe back at camp while everybody else is off doing their. The thing is, you're like he needs because if anything, a, another thing is if anything happens to him, they're all gonna starve and kill each right. other. Um, but even like his relationship with Sadie is one of my favorite scenes. Like, is is him and Sadie having their back and forth about the yeah, dress? That was very early on in the shoot, and that really like woke me up a bit. I was like, this is awesome. This is like my first opportunity to like perform with great, like I'm really performing in a good scene. It's fun. Um, and that was, yeah, that was a good time. Up until then, it was like, I think it was like the first year, but up until then, it was a lot of just like, Mr. Morgan, we need food. Mr. Yeah. Morgan, this. And, and him being like, yeah, you're fat. <laughs> and being like, yes, sir, I'm fat. And it was just a lot of that. Yeah, you know, like, oh, okay, fine, I'm fat. Oh, boy. Um, you know, and I was like, oh, this is fun. I'm glad I'm working. But then that Sadie hating me, I was like, oh, this is fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, uh, going back to the thing, it's like, I don't know. Yeah, he was just, uh, he wasn't a coward. No, definitely not. And like, he never ran from a fight. He just didn't seek him out. Didn't get, yeah, exactly. He wasn't going out looking for fights. Um, In fact, I have an idea. Do you mind if I share an idea? Because I don't know if they're going to make a third. Yeah, I think no I one does no at the idea. moment. Yeah, right. I have no idea. I'm not leaking anything out of it. <laughs> but Pearson does survive. And yes. I know I'm pitching myself to be in the next game. But the idea of Pearson still living and maybe being a little older when uh, Marston's... The game would probably be like in the future and Marston, the son, would be like doing whatever mission, some vengeance thing, right? Yeah. Pearson being one of the few surviving members who is a survivor and but also isn't a coward but certainly not somebody who seeks out blood and vengeance and all of that jazz and in today's growing world where <laughs> men are learning to be vulnerable and more sensitive and well-rounded and not just all about conquering and destruction yeah. and all of that and machismo maybe there could be a more positive storyline that's still fun 
I still think the character will murder a whole bunch. <laughs> like we all love, we all want murder. <laughs> and they still give you all that murder you love, but there could be a Yoda almost that's just kind of like, you know, there's a better way. And it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's still fine that it doesn't work, but you can you can try and choose, not just being like a good like this last game was great. It was like, how can you be you can be kind a of, hero can, or an outlaw can, or, right, yeah. you can be a hero or an outlaw. But it all involved murder. Yeah. <laughs> With this one, it's like it's it's so funny to try to pitch a Red Dead game that isn't as much murder in it. A Red Dead so, game that's very touchy feely. Like touchy feely. It's a lot of it's a lot of sitting down around the campfire. I love and it. Sharing, <laughs> breaking bread. Uh, yeah, I would love that. I would love Pearson to come back. This is what it should be. He comes back and he says, "Look." Whatever the kid's name is, <laughs> don't don't seek vengeance. Look what happened to your father. Yeah. Look what happened to your father's friend. Like everybody gets murdered who's seeking out blood. Um, you know, you die by the sword and all that. Yeah. And then he immediately gets shot to death. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> and, and it's like there's you there was a moment where maybe there could be a oh, moral. Look. And then it's the bloodiest game Red Dead's ever made. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> You know what I mean? Oh my Just god! One scene with Pearson. <laughs> it's weird though that we're talking about this because one note that I made here is that, like, in a game that is about cold-blooded murder for the the vast majority of its running time. I mean, obviously, with Red Dead Two, you could take the time to go off and just go fishing if you wanted, and not kill anybody. Um, that sure. was cool too, or you know, hunt animals. I don't know, whatever you whatever you felt like doing. I want some crocodile gator shoes. I'm gonna go to the swamp and and catch right. some crocodiles. Um, what's interesting is I do remember one thing that, right, so one thing that I found interesting was going back to, again, this idea of Pearson, like, not being a coward, not being afraid. He also, during the San Denis chapter, he kind of opens up about his own personal struggles with, with like, depression and stuff. Like, during those chapters, like, he talks a lot about, like, you know, he goes into a big depression and you're like, Again, of men in this era, it's not something you expect to necessarily see as somebody right. being like, I'm right. just going through a really hard time right now and stuff's <laughs> not working out, you know? I don't think I knew when I was shooting, playing Pearson, how similar we were. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Very food-centered, like love food, love cooking, um, love to cook for people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but also like, you know, staying away from violence and also just like being very emotionally, having a vo good vocabulary, yeah. I should say, with my emotions. And um, yeah, you know, you just sort of, I wish I, I put more of myself into it, but I probably did, who knows? I, um, but yeah, I, he, he was a man of the sea, yeah. daddy. He was on land for too long. Yeah. He, his, he was drying out. You know, he needed that's why he drank so much. Yeah. He drank so much because he didn't like being dry. You know, he needed to be on the water. And the poor guy is he's not in the water. I, I think that's another one for the next game. <laughs> he's gotta float out into the distance. Oh, when he gets <laughs> shot like, to bits, he falls into the water and then falls into the water and floats away. And then you see all of these sardines just, <laughs> just attack him, eat him. Leave just eat him, eat him, and then, yeah, just leave bones, and then that's eaten by a huge whale. <laughs> and he's finally a whaler. A whale. He's finally a whaler. Yeah. Heard it here first. This is breaking yeah. news, breaking developments. Yeah. Uh, Everybody wants. Everybody wants to know what happened, Pearson. I, I will. I. It's funny actually because this is a very natural way of progressing into this though, and you've talked about it a little bit already. But almost everybody, like so, like you said, right? People in this series who live a violent lifestyle for the most part unless they have that moment of awakening where they go oh wait a violent lifestyle is not a great idea they yeah. generally die by a violent lifestyle um yes. there's a handful of characters that make it out of red dead in general like one and two and the ones that do generally are the ones that say you know what let's just lay our weapons down this isn't worth it y'all <laughs> And one of the things that I found interesting is Pearson is one of those characters that gets what what you would call traditionally a happy ending. You know, he gets an ending where it's 
<laughs> he gets his general store and he, you know, yeah. like for you, uh, what did you learn? Like, when did you kind of come to learn that Pearson wouldn't just be like, wouldn't just be like gunned down by a minigun in camp someday? Like, Honestly, know? I didn't know until the last possible shoot moment <clears throat> because um, no one told me. No yeah. one said like Pearson lives. Um Pearson lives. So the, 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 yeah, no, it's the, Pearson <laughs> the the order of it is like every day you go in and you could shoot something that happened, you know, early in the game or at, towards the end of the game. You know, yeah. you don't know where it's not obviously it's not chronological. So I know that there I remember shooting something where I'm like super drunk and I'm talking about how it's all over and you know, so I know that my character is not long for like the game because I like I'm admitting that the gang is falling apart. Yeah. So I knew the gang was falling apart, but I didn't know what my I was like, do I get a death scene? Do I die in this game? Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't get a death scene. So I was like, okay, that makes sense. Like I'm not sure we would necessarily know what happened to him. But anyways, then um you know, a few months later, I was I went in for uh, ADR sessions, <clears throat> where it's just all um, booth, yeah, and voiceover work, and so all of the Pearson in the general store stuff is all voiceover, all ADR. That yeah. wasn't any motion capture. Uh, I think that's why he looks so stiff. <laughs> He's just standing <laughs> there by the counter, being like, "What are you doing here?" It's, it's uh, like those know? Disney robots. Like yeah, it's Disney a little. <laughs> Would you like some candy? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so it's all ADR. And I was like, oh, shit. You know, he has a general store. And they were like, hey, he lives as a general store. And, you know, and I was like, oh, wow. And that was it. That's how I knew that I yeah. survived. But I didn't. I don't know what it is, man. Like, I guess when you're not somebody. Like, when you play a character who's not going out and, like, looking I'm for blood. You kind of don't think you're gonna have a death scene, you know. I don't mm -hmm. know if you think you'll live or not, but you're not necessarily thinking like, "Oh, they're gonna give you a death scene," yeah. you know. Like that'd be fun. I think it's like if Pearson, who's the cook, had this like incredible shootout or something, <laughs> or like again, he was hatcheting, you know, he was macheting or yeah, yeah, like you know, that would be really that'd be there. It'd be weird and funny and fun, but. I kind of had this feeling he wasn't going to get that kind of death scene. Um, so yeah, he didn't. He lived. And he got a first name. Yeah, exactly. And I, I like, like, as I say, off the top of my head, I can only think of a handful of characters that... Uh, I, it's funny because what I always say about Red Dead is that, like, everybody in Red Dead gets, to my mind, and I'm, I'm not trying to whatever, but, like, they get, in my mind, the ending that they deserve to some extent. Like, as in... Right. Because it's it's... It's called Red Dead Redemption and everyone kind of gets a little bit of a redemptive arc. They start here and they end here. And the ones that don't, the ones that don't make any progress, like growing as a person or like changing it all throughout the adventure are the ones that like they deserve everything that they get. Like they deserve to go out the way they go out. Yeah. Um, I have well, nothing you know, against you, Peter Blomquist. I swear, I have nothing Peter against Blomquist. you. Peter Blomquist. I have nothing against He'll you. He'll get his. He'll get his. <laughs> He's... We're all very similar to the characters we play. <laughs> I've heard he's Peter an absolute like, messer. Like, he just messes on everyone in the best yeah, way possible. He's one of the funniest guys. Yeah, he was a lot of fun. Um, uh, I, I miss him. I miss them all. It's like it's still a group of people who text each other. And I love that. Stay in touch. And um, I'm really grateful for, you know, the friends. It's it's got me and and like i mean who who wouldn't want to be a part of like a one of the bigger video games to ever come out it's it's brilliant i, I wonder if once all this the pandemic has settled the dust from the pandemic has settled and we start returning to some semblance of normality again that like i i, I i'm eager to see like hopefully that you guys are back on the road and doing your convention appearances and getting to hang out because like the way i look at it is like when i make a film like with you know, tw you know, a bunch of people. I think the my biggest was like twenty seven people working on a crew together. We get super close, and any chance you get to meet up with those people, you're like, we're making another film or whatever it is. It's the most exciting thing ever. So, like, I hope for you guys that like you get that like 
chance to just like whatever it may be as I say convention appearances or whatever that you get to like get on the road and hang out and, and just be the outlaws be the gang <laughs> yeah that would be really fun and I hope that happens and you know I'm sure people are itching to just get out in general and yes yeah seeing like a big if not everybody a big chunk of the Red Dead gang would be a lot of fun uh, but you know I will take just like a uh a bar hang with all of us. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I'll le- I'll leak it so people can come. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. I'll tell everybody where we're going. It's at and Rob's. We're... Rob's got his own bar like, in yeah, the back right. of his house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob strikes me as the guy who would have a bar in the back of his house. I'm just putting it out. Like, you just, and it would be so glorious. Like, it'd be a beautiful, beautiful bar. I just, I, I feel it in my bones. <laughs> well, Rob lives in Indiana. Yeah. So I'm sure he has this incredible yard. Yeah. And we would all fly to Indiana to hang out and have some fun. And, you know, it's kind of like a middle ground. Yeah. Like New York or LA. Like, that's where we're coming from. And we meet in Indiana. And he's the nicest guy. He is. I've never seen the photo of his character. And I had, like, I was like, oh my God, what a badass character. Like, because I knew about the game Red Dead yeah. before I played it, but I didn't. I didn't play it, but I was like, wow, what a, like, mean looking character. And then he didn't come right away. Uh, I started working but we weren't like i'll say we didn't overlap right away yeah and then there was a day where i came in and they were like oh yeah you know rob's coming in and i was like oh man he came in and he's just just like kind of sunburned (laughs) you know squinty beautiful man and he's like oh (laughs) everything i say is like oh man that's funny and i was like oh i love him i was like i was immediately like i was like i'm in love with this guy yeah so nice he has so that genuine. He has that ability, man. That's just like the second, because like even the, when I called him, it was like, "Patty, God damn, it's good to talk to you, man." I'm like, he seems yeah. so ridiculously excited to talk to me. Why, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah he's he's perfect. He's yeah, perfect for everything he does. Because everybody, not only is he great at what he does, but when people see him, he's the nicest person <laughs> in the world. But you know, I could say the same about Roger. Yeah. I mean, Roger's as sweet as they come. Everybody. There's I don't think there's anybody that I was like, I You're a dick. <laughs> didn't really like. I mean, and that's why we keep hanging out. I don't yeah. think we hang out because we, you know, we don't keep texting each other at least or Zoom calling, which we were doing in, during the pandemic, because we worked on something for a long time. Like that's not enough of a reason. Yeah, exactly. You know, um, it's because everybody's really sweet and nice and and interested in each other's lives. So uh, yeah. How how rare is that in so many ways? Like, I'm not trying to be you know a Debbie Downer here, but like, from even working in smaller productions, like, there's always that thing where you're like, one or two of these people, it's like it's like a sure. it's like a murder mystery. You're like, okay, guys, one or two of the people here are absolute dicks. We just have to wait yeah. and see which ones there. There will be evidence that will pile yeah. up, and we will determine who. Or at least. Like there was a lot of people who worked in the crew and the yeah. production end of it, and there's always a chance that one of them are assholes. <laughs> None of them. They were all nice. They were all like funny. They all got. Every, I don't know. They were just like it was a joy to go in. I remember the last day. It was very sad. It was yeah. very like. Well, then again, I had three raps. Like I think it was like I went in one day and they're like, "That's a rap on Jam." And everybody clapped, and then I got called back in like <laughs> two weeks later, and they're like, "We need to get you um, chopping some more venison. <laughs> we don't have enough of you chopping venison, <laughs> Jim." Like every, almost every scene was me chopping or like scrubbing down my area. Like they'd look at me and they'd be like, "Okay, so start this scene. I don't know. You're you're chopping a potato. <laughs> okay." Okay, and then the next thing they'd be like, um, I don't know, you're, you're scrubbing your work area. You're keeping it clean. And so it was like those two options, and I'd be like, am I scrubbing? Scrubbing <laughs> the work area, probably? Yeah, let's just scrub. Because what else is Paris? Maybe maybe smoking. Yeah. That was my favorite, when they'd give me like a little straw to put yeah. smoke with. I was like, oh, something new. Because yeah. usually I'm just at my workstation being like, and he was a, like a OCD meat freak, man. <laughs> he was always scrubbing his work area. He's just like, never clean. <laughs> never clean, man. <laughs> you go like, no one talked about Pearson's 
If you look oh, at Pearson's see, hands, see, they're, they're actually they're just raw, raw rage. Right? Yeah. They're raw. <laughs> you go like this poor guy. He's got so much <laughs> pent up anxiety. He's constantly <laughs> scrubbing his workstation. I, I just love, as I say, the fact that you have so like being a filmmaker for me, uh, which is it's it's um I mean you've done a lot of work in film and TV, looking through your credentials, like you've done a lot over the years. But like this is such a different world um like what was it like for you like uh, in what i imagine i imagine i could i have some ideas about this but for out of your mouth i'd love to know, like what were some of the like major differences between say working in film and tv so if i'm shooting a tv show or a film you're just as realistic as possible right so you just want to capture the moment yeah they don't really like if there's a little I stepped on your line. Great. That's what you do in life. Usually not a big deal. Um, continuity. Sure. That's important. If you drank in between a line, maybe you need to do it again. Um, so there's like little things that you have to think about. And obviously the rotating, like you got that angle. We have to now change angles, but you know, so the biggest, and that's, that go, that's similar with red dead. But really, it's very like you don't. So they're telling you there's a you're in a barn. There's yeah. no barn. You know what I mean? There's like pipes that make it sort of seem like a barn, but I have no idea yeah. where anything would possibly be. You know, and they're like, this is a wall. And you're like, no, that's a pipe. <laughs> they're like, yeah, but that's that's a wall. And you're like, okay, that's a wall. That's a window. All right, that's a window. <laughs> okay, great. So that's windows, that's pipe. And two, you can't talk over each other. Uh, sometimes your Velcro, would, like the Velcro would go like rip. And they'd be, cause your like arm was on yourself and the ball has a Velcro. So uh -huh. it just touched and it went like rip. And they would be like, we heard Velcro. And you're like, oh shit, we gotta shoot this again. Yeah. Um, or, you know, just the, it took so much more imagination. Yeah. To be in it. Cause you're just, you're not just learning the lines and reciting them and making sure you don't step on each other's lines but you have to like really believe that you're in you know this like cold barn or a hot campfire whatever it yeah. is you have to really imagine it. and I, I know it I don't know maybe seems corny but I'm really grateful that I have improv background yeah because that's what it is like you in my mid-20s I took improv classes and you start to learn and I'll say relearn because I think we have this naturally as children. Yeah. I think as children, we are natural. If a kid, when we were five and a kid ran up to you and said like, you're a choo-choo train, you know, you'd be like, choo-choo. Yeah. And, <laughs> chug 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 and you wouldn't even think twice about it. And then we get like shame and we're like, <laughs> you know, you go like, oh shit, I'm not a choo-choo train. You know, they're like, you're a choo-choo train. You go like, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to play a choo-choo train. I want to get chicks. <laughs> <laughs> and so you like you start to like swallow all that playfulness and imagination and so when i took improv classes again and then started doing improv at, at the ucb theater i was like oh man this is really just tapping into what i already knew mm. which was like a, a playful imagination where everything and anything is possible and you say yes to the world and you know so bringing that into red dead it was like, yeah, I can, I, I have, I've been, my imagination has been, wor been, I've been working it. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's been kept active. It's, yeah, it's been kept act active. So I, I'm able to imagine the world around me. And so, but it's still a challenge, you know, it, it, it was way more challenging than any acting job I've ever had. Bar none. I mean, it is, it is, it was really challenging. Cause like, cause there's just so many rules. Also, what I found amazing was, if I'm say at my station and the 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 Mr. Morgan character approaches me on the right and I turn to him and I'm like, Mr. Morgan, and he's like, I got you some deer. And I go like, this is great. And and he slaps it down. And I'm like, oh, you're the best. And he walks away. You have to then do that from the left, from behind, forward. Uh, yeah. Because that character, that player might approach you yeah. from an angle. You oh, know, and I was like, that's crazy but yeah. i love that i have to do that you wouldn't have to do the whole scene yeah yeah 
uh, you would just have to do that beginning. That entrance, like, yeah. You. Yeah, that entrance. So he's like, Mr. Morgan, coming from the left, from the right, uh, straight back. Is, That's I so mean, cool. Of, these are things that you would never imagine yeah. as an actor having to think about. And you don't have to think about it. They tell you what to do. But, <laughs> but still, you're like, wow, this is new. And it'll never happen again unless I do another video game. Yeah. So. Like... I, I find it so, I, I've been saying it to everyone, but like being a, a director, in, uh, you know, myself, I I'm, I love hearing about this stuff because to me, it's it's almost the highest levels, in my opinion, of acting because it is all imagination based. Like, I remember talking to Ben Davis and him explaining that, like, that, like, <laughs> he's like out on this rocky cliff face and he's like, you know, it's freezing cold and whatever, but like... He, this is in Red Dead 1 and nobody's told him that it's cold. So he's like, he's like, I should have been shaking or something. Like now that I look back on it, I'm like, oh crap. But like in Red Dead 2, everyone always told us, okay, it's a foggy day. It's cold. Yeah. It's this. Uh, like hearing you talk about like the crawfish, like the idea that like, I can imagine that you're doing that scene and in your head, you're like, there's a lake and there's crawfish and I can see it. I know that they're there. And you know, and I love that. I love that like you're making it into reality before we ever do on our end. Do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but I tell you, man, no matter what I imagined, it couldn't compare in comparison to what those guys, those they're people, amazing. Whoever, whoever created that. I mean, unbelievable. I mean, the thing that caught me, the wowed me the most, cause I played the opening and it's in the opening, it's snowing. Mm. And when I saw, the characters taking steps into the snow. Yeah. And like, not just leaving a mark. That's fine. That's like, that's that, that would be impressive enough for me. It's like, Oh, you see the boot print. No, they go beyond that. It's freshly fallen snow. The snow is still kind of fluffy. And when you step out of that hole, right. When you make the step and then you leave it, snow sometimes it collapses, falls back yeah. in, collapses in a little bit. It did that. The snow collapsed in, to the footprint and i was like i am okay. not gonna be able to play this game because i'm gonna lose my shit every time it was so brilliant yeah i've never seen anything like it forget it it's just impossible there it's is impossible. stuff in that game that is still just just outside what any other video games have done like uh, sand is something that game does really well as well because similarly like that like when you step on sand and you step off it yes it leaves a print but like that you'll often like I'll, i've noticed that like you watch especially if it's really hot it will almost kind of close in on it's like it'll the sand will start to just bury itself that that print will just you know get lost it just flattens out yeah oh, okay. okay and like that like with the snow it's just i i as you say Everything in these games, some animator, some person, some uh, some environmental designer or whatever it is, has looked and gone, oh, this is what happens in that situation. Like if you're in a swamp and the, and you do this, this is how the water ripples or this is how, you know. Yeah. It's amazing. It's incredible. As you say, it's, uh, it's more real than reality in a lot of ways. <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I think Rockstar does a great <laughs> job of their brand is very, I find it interesting. I think they take it extremely seriously. Mm. And it's that kind of like attitude that I think um, one, it attracts people who are like, also they take it very seriously and don't want to overlook any detail. And I think the fans love uh, Rockstar <clears throat> because it's like we were saying about the NFL. Yeah. They say it's special and yeah. you believe it. And they they um they live up to it. The proof in the pudding. You know? Yeah, yeah. They 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 walk the walk. You know, like they're like, look, we are this. We're like Fort Knox. We don't want to tell you anything. It's all a secret, and we're not going to leak shit to you yeah. unless we want to leak it. <laughs> but when the game comes out, like, yeah, it was really hyped. Oh yeah. But it still surpassed anybody's expectations. Oh, big time. Because they are. They are actually, they're not just like marketing themselves in a certain way. They are executing as well. And it's just incredible. It's, um, I mean, to, to kind of start to, to wind down on this, like, I mean, I can only imagine like that, as you said, right? Like when you were talking about the gang and your friend and like the other, the other cast members, like, 
you know, being part of something like this, like this is a legacy that that's going to follow you for many, like, you know, as you say, each uh, five years, you're going to add a couple of extra years onto the amount of time that you've been <laughs> yeah. working on this. I'm but, excited to. Yeah, it's, it's, it doesn't matter because like, as I say, I guarantee you, and I'm waiting for the person, please comment down below because I guarantee you there are people who like, you know, Simon Pearson is their guy. They're like, Oh, I identified with him because I also was in the Navy and wanted to be a whaler <laughs> or whatever. Um, can I can I tell you a quick story before we end? This yes, of that? course. Yeah, yeah. The guy sent Hello, me a sons. letter. Sent me a letter. Really moving. He's like, I was in the Navy and I really um, uh, like appreciated that you played a character that was in the Navy. I related to it and uh, I would be honored if you could sign a couple of these photos and send them to me. And I was like, Oh, this is why I do it. Amazing. This guy is so sweet. And then like a uh, month later it was on eBay. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> like, Scalper. Hey, I wrote him a nice letter. No. It was like, a, the letter was included. It was like, oh, Hey, God. here's this heartfelt letter from this schmuck who thought I was a real Navy guy. Or he might've been, but man, it, and it, it oh was on eBay. my god! Was like, Shameless. Oh, wow. I was like, bravo! bravo. <laughs> I'm not even mad. I'm impressed. I want I'm my not, no, I wasn't mad. I was <laughs> oh like, my god! This guy's trying to make a living, and he did. He hopefully he made some. A buck <laughs> I, I mean, yeah, I I go to a lot of. Uh, there's a festival in the UK, a film festival that I always go to. And like that, you always get those people that run up at the end of like a movie to the cast and they're like, I'm your biggest fan. And you can see that they have a sleeve with every film that's playing there that weekend. Yeah, like, can I just right. get your signature? And you're like, yeah, that's going to be on eBay within 15 minutes of this. Like, And as you say, you got to you got to yeah. hand it to people's uh, ingenuity. Um, Actors, directors, writers, we're all a lot of us are most of us. Come on. We're ego driven. Yes. Yeah. And approval driven. And if somebody says we love you, you're our favorite. Even if they came up to me and they're like, you are my third favorite character. <laughs> I'd be like, that, that's, <laughs> it means Pretty a lot good to odds. Me, that That's not bad. That's yeah. not bad. I'm on, I'm on the Mount Rushmore of characters. That means a lot. <laughs> top four, you're on the, or a top three, you're on the podium. Yeah. Don't complain. And if you want to be that honest with me, I'd love it. You're my eighth favorite character. You're like, oh, all right. Freaking hell. It's a little <laughs> lower than I went, <laughs> but it's reasonable. Oh, uh, it. As I say, uh, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm very, we, we get a lot of interesting, like, as I say, I did not realize that Leopold Strauss had as big a following as he did. And he does, which blew my mind. Cause like, sure. well, me and Howard had a big chat about like, you know, I was still a little hurt by some of the stuff that his character had done in the game. Um, but at the same time, I still, I still wasn't, you know, I still liked his character. So Again, uh, there is other there's other stuff to check out here from you know other cast members and stuff. But um, something that I appreciate by chatting to each and every this is why my goal, my dream is to get all of all of the outlaws together under one umbrella. Um, it's because y'all shared this this incredible like moment in history or several years in history. Um, but the, I love that like. There's such unique, like anything, there's such unique experiences around it. You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause Pearson and Arthur Morgan and Dutch and, you know, Micah and Tilly are all going to have totally different journeys, like not just in game, but like through the whole creative process. So, right. Um, and obviously one of the things that everybody keeps saying, and I'll just say it here before we finish up as well, is that like. Rockstar went out of their way, in in my opinion, in, in a lot of the other cast opinion, in you know, to pick the right people for the job. The cast in this these this game was incredible, yourself very much included. Everybody felt like the right person for the role they were in. Like Rockstar killed themselves with that. Absolutely. Well, thank you for saying that. And I agree with you. I do. I think it's it was a great cast, and I'm I'm honored to be a part of it. And I'm glad. I'm really excited. I'm glad we made this happen. Same. Yeah. And you're an awesome guy, and oh. I really appreciate you bringing me on. Jim, thank you so much. And Jim Santan Jelly. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the hesitation with the Santan Jelly. That was I like a William Shatner. Even stronger. <laughs> yeah. It was like a William Shatner pronunciation. <laughs> 
<laughs> Jim Santangeli. Yeah, yeah. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Just keep going. Santangeli. <laughs> so, yeah, just put on a Rob Weedoff voice. Santangeli. Yeah. yeah. Shatner. Shatner. <laughs> um, honestly, it's as I say, everyone that I've spoken to who's worked on this game has like been really enjoyable to talk to. Has come from a dip, you know acting background but different walks of life and stuff and just getting to hear all these stories uh i've enjoyed it so much and like that as i say i spent 200 hours in a world that you were part of so thank you for your contributions to that world uh thank you for coming on here to chat with me and uh, again guys i will say what i always say here which is again like you know comment down below because like uh, this is one great way for getting people like jim to check out your thoughts. I mean, we've had some people comment like amazing theories about characters and stuff under uh, under the episode. So please do. I'm sure, Jim, you'd love to check out people's thoughts on Pearson. Um, Be great. Just do you have a question that you regret regret not asking or you feel good? No, no, I don't. Like, I, again, I feel like a lot of what because I did talk about the big one for me that I wanted to ask about was that like depression, like that part where he goes into kind of a depression because, again, like I suffer I suffer from mental health problems myself, like and like like many people. Um, now we're hitting a point where people are a lot more comfortable talking about that stuff. But that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. I appreciated that. Like Pearson was this character in this time where you didn't expect anybody to be like. So I'm going through a rough time, and he was like, "Yeah, I'm going through a rough time." And I was like, "Oh shit, that's pretty wild." Um, yeah, for them to even like consider putting a character that's slightly vulnerable. In a yeah. game called Red Dead. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it says a lot about Rockstar and what they are trying to accomplish. And I do think there's a place for that, especially if they make another one. I yeah. think it's like they just sort of scratched the surface of, like, humanity. And I think that's what they were trying for, right? They're trying to, like, make this, I, this story as big and real and textured as they can and it's such a good job and the idea that there's actually more that they can do and hopefully they will yeah i hope like, they make another one i anyway. i've seen a lot it's interesting we've got a lot of theories on on certain episodes and stuff like and on the alex mckenna episode there's been a lot of theories because people are like i want to see a sadie i want to see a sadie fucking red that makes sense yeah they're like yeah. Uh, does she live the she survives the game she survives and it's a hinted at that she goes to south america so a lot of people were like, oh, that's a great way for like her being a bounty hunter in South America is a great place for like the next game to take off. But like, yeah. and obviously Alex McKenna is like, yeah, please, let's make that happen. That'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like, as yeah. you say, the thing with Rockstar is they'll do what Rockstar deem best and nobody can, will know until it happens more or less. Like, you know. Um, oh, yeah. But yeah, I would love it just because I, I, I know they would. One, they would make a, a great, they would tell a great story. And two, you kind of want that experience for a, a new set of actors. And uh, and as per always, uh, I, I, if you enjoyed the video, please like, please subscribe, stick around. We've got more coming. Um, I, I don't know. I, I've got a handful of, of people left to get from the, the game. And it's just, it's. I think it's becoming like a fight now. Like it was, it was at the start, it was like, I was getting a lot. And now it's becoming like, I gotta, I gotta try and get Sam Strelitz, and I gotta try and get Roger Clark, and I gotta try and get, you know, uh, yeah. everyone. Um, but we, we will get there. We will get there. Uh, <laughs> I believe in you. It might take it twelve years, but you'll do it. <laughs> there we go. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. By the time that we get the next Red Dead, where Pearson yeah. gets shot up and falls into the water. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> then they'll come run in, Patty. <laughs> like I saw an interview with that guy. He said that was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much jim and yeah Welcome. as for always guys let's survive together and peace out <laughs>